Let's continue. Returning to the text, the priest now unites the Biedma brothers. This man you see here is Captain Biedma, and this is the beautiful Morris who did so right by him. The French that I told you about left them in the dire condition that you see so that you might reveal the liberalness of your heart. The plan now is for everyone to go to Andalusia, where within a month a fleet would depart Seville for New Spain, and the judge will be aboard. Meanwhile, they'll send for their father and celebrate the baptism of Thoraida and her wedding. They all embrace one another and everyone is happy. The narrator specifies, however, that only Sancho Panza despaired at the delay in being able to go to bed. Technically speaking, everyone has just spent two sleepless nights. The narrator then adds that Sancho threw himself down on the trappings of his ass, which cost him dearly, as will be discussed later, again alluding to the perennial problem of his gray. The inn is indeed a place where magical encounters occur. Hypothetically, the chapter ends when we learn that the judge's daughter is named Doña Clara de Viedma. At the same time, Don Quixote stations himself outside the inn in order to guard the castle to ensure that the guests would not be assaulted by some giant or other evil-doing villain. Now something else mysterious occurs. It so happened that shortly before the arrival of dawn, there reached the ears of the ladies a voice so harmonious and precise that it obliged them all to pay close attention to it. The voice is perfect, and unaccompanied by music, it sings a moving melody. Sometimes it seemed to them that it sang in the courtyard, others that it came from the stable. At this point, Cardenio pauses outside the women's door to recommend that they all listen to the voice of a mule driver's boy whose singing is enchanting. It's assumed that chapter 43 starts with the ballad of the mule driver's boy. The table of contents says, where is told the agreeable story of the mule driver's boy with other strange happenings at the inn. It begins, I'm a mariner of love. The ballad summarizes the love theme that we have been following as far back as Grisostomo and Marcela, where someone sang another ballad of unrequited love. This formal echo links that earlier pastoral love to the captive's love in the Moorish novel. I sail without hope to reach any port. I'm following a star to where I know not, and thus I sail as if lost. If you remember, during his first sally, Don Quixote himself followed a star, and in the story of the curious impertinent, Lotario's second sonnet dealt with the same topic. Now, when the mule boy refers to Palinurus, the pilot of Aeneas's ship, Cervantes finally ties off the Mariner of Love theme as an allusion to Virgil's classical epic. And note how poetry works its magic. The allusion to Polyneurus near the novel's end requires a new perspective on the sonnet near the novel's middle recited by Lotario to Camilla, whose name must now refer to Aeneas's Amazonian enemy in Virgil's epic. At the end of the ballad, Dorotea wakes Clara, who was taken by a strange trembling, as if she were stricken by a severe case of quartane fever. The odd reference to this quartane, or jungle fever, which is malaria, a disease from equatorial Africa or the Americas, gives a transoceanic touch to the scene. Clara says she would rather have her eyes and ears closed so as not to see or hear that unhappy singer. Dorotea tries to correct her. They say the singer is a mule boy. Clara explains that he is a lord of many villages. That is, as Francisco Rico notes, he's a noble much higher in rank than the Hidalgo caste. Dorotea now asks for silence. I think he's going to sing again with new verses and a new melody. This reference to a new song alludes to the Bible's Psalm 40. Then he put a new song in my mouth. It also refers to the singer's change from the ballad form to that of the lira, a form invented by Garcilaso in the early 16th century. The mule boy's lira expresses another impossible amorous conquest. 
In love, persistent striving has been known to achieve difficult things. Thus, even though I'm driving through heavy air on even heavier wings, I fear not at being the first to draw myself up to heaven from earth. This frustrated quest for love reminds us of the first lira in Spanish, Garcilaso's Ode to the Flower of Nidus. If strumming my simple lyre could produce a sound that in an instant might put out the wildest fire, the raging wind's persistence, and the fury of the sea, its movement. Ultimately, then, the singer and his poems allude to Orpheus, whose music had the power to control and transform nature. Next, Clara tells Dorotea the story of the mule boy. This singer, my lady, is the son of a nobleman of Aragon, lord of two villages who lived across the street from my father's house at the court in Madrid. Two points to consider here. First, the game of identities in the Aragonese mule boy, remember mule drivers were often moriscos, reminds us of the mysterious transformation of a moor from Tangiers into a moor from Aragon in chapter 41. Second, the geographic specificity here, the boy's family is from Aragon with the house in Madrid, is political. An aristocratic rebellion in Zaragoza was suppressed by Philip II in 1591, and the kingdom of Aragon was also the site of serious conflicts between old Christians and Moriscos. Otherwise, the story is simple. The boy had seen Clara and, of course, had fallen in love with her. Among the signs that he made to me was one of one hand together with the other, letting me know that he would marry me. Clara's problem is that having no mother, she has no one in whom to confide. Now Clara's story becomes erotic. When my father was away from home and his too, she says she used to raise a little the canvas or lattice shades and let him see all of me from which he took so much delight that he showed signs of going crazy. Recall the stories of Cardenio and Lustinda and the captain and Zoraida. Here we have a summarized version of numerous love stories in Don Quixote, the window that separates the lovers, the fear of the father figure, the madness of love, etc. Notice also the ease with which the young Aragonese nobleman adapts himself to the life of a mule driver, in other words, that of a morisco, or should we say, tagarino. According to Clara, the young man dresses in the habit of a mule boy so naturally that if I did not carry his portrait imprinted on my soul, it would be impossible for me to recognize him. This idea of the beloved's portrait imprinted on the lover's soul comes from the platonic theory of love so popular during the Renaissance. According to this theory, love is the manifestation of some cosmic law of irresistible attraction between two souls. Clearly, Cervantes saw Neoplatonic love as offering hope for bridging all kinds of social, cultural, religious, and even ethnic differences in the Western Mediterranean. As Dorotea says, God will bring the dawn and things will go better for us. By the way, like Rui Perez de Viedma, Clara drops another autobiographical touch. Her 16th birthday is the day of the Feast of San Miguel. 